Hey, VC community, how are you today? I uh, hope you're doing good. I figured I'd um, do another video showcasing one of my uh, more favorite artists, which would be Steve Hackett. And um, I, what I'll do is I'll show you uh, my vinyl uh, record collection, the LPs and the uh, singles. This should be a pretty quick uh, video. And then uh, maybe I'll do another one uh, showcasing the my CD collection, which is a little bit more extensive. Anyway, here we go. Of course, the first album is going to be uh, Voyage of the Acolyte. This just happens to be a domestic pressing on Chrysalis. You can see that. And the record itself is mint. The uh, cover's a little a little bit worn, it's got a little ring wear. There you go. This is one I always wanted to get a, a UK import copy of it uh, on uh, Charisma, and I've never done that yet. So, uh, maybe one day. Sorry, two. Fantastic album. What a great way to start your. Uh, start your solo career after being in Genesis for about five years. But anyway, so here's Steve Hackett's uh, Voyage of the Acolyte. And let's put it back. This is uh, his second album. Uh, Please don't touch. Or please don't touch. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this down. Listen to the Gary Boyle's uh, "The Dancer" album in the background. Well, trying to be in the background, but anyway, this is uh, "Please Don't Touch," and this is an interesting record because uh, it's actually uh, there's actually been several different pressings of it. This is a British import. came out in, um, Acolyte came out in um, 75 before Trick of the Tail. And this came out in 78, three years later, after Steve said, all right, sayonara to Genesis. All right, so this is um, a British import pressing and they, they stopped using that cool uh, Mad Hatter label and they started using this blue one. Mad Hatter's on there, but the, uh, Anyway, um, there are actually, um, they did a repress on this and the, uh, the mastering was fucked up because uh, right between uh, hoping, not hoping love will last, it, that segues into a land of a thousand autumns and it's supposed to segue into please don't touch. And uh, on some of them, uh, some of the represses, for some reason, the mastering was screwed up where uh, there's a huge gap between um, Land of a Thousand Autumns and Please Don't Touch. It doesn't, it doesn't segue directly into it. There's this three second gap. So um, it's a weird pressing. I happen to have a copy of it. I'd like, I wouldn't mind getting rid of it because I'm not interested in that, that uh, bad pressing. But anyway, I would say that this and uh, Voyage are Steve's best records. This one's so diverse. It's, it's got such great music on it. <clears throat> the third album is... Uh, God, I can't remember these. Spectral Mornings. You get in front of the camera, I just forget. I forget what I'm talking about. This is a domestic pressing on Chrysalis. Blue label and um, Spectral Mornings is just a fantastic record as well. It's it, it's a I would say actually I would say the first four of uh, Hackett's solo albums are flawless. I mean they're they're, they're brilliantly uh, 
the the music the uh, the writing the, the compositions are fantastic the players are real good and the um, I don't know just flawless they're flawless records to me except for that mispressing of uh, please don't touch so but anyway this came out uh, I think this was 80 no 79 I believe this came out and um, it's a great record here is um, a British pressing of the same album. Oops, there it is, covers in the label. Yeah. This is a, a brilliant record. And uh, oh, you know what? I think this comes with a, an insert with the uh, lyrics, too. Maybe this doesn't. Oh, this doesn't have the lyrics, that's right. I think that's the, uh, the next record, which is. Oh, wait a minute. We also have uh, a 12 inch single from that uh, from that last album with uh, clocks on it. There's clocks on this? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you put out this uh, 12 inch single. This, uh, this was nice because it has a uh, An edited version of uh, clocks and then it has uh, on the B side it's got two, two tracks on it that were non album tracks they've since been added to the uh, remaster on the CD but uh, oh, the acoustic sets nice a live set that he plays acoustically um, excerpts from lost time in Cordoba and then uh, some traditional guitar exercise, and then Blood on the Rooftops, and then he plays Horizons, and he plays Kim. And then Tiger Moth is actually a live version. It sounds like a studio version, but uh, really well recorded. But uh, it's a live, uh, live recording, according to the notes, anyway. I like this, though. Nice. Then his fourth album, Defector. This is actually a domestic pressing on Mercury, but it's, uh, I guess, licensed by Charisma. And that's why they got their, uh, their uh, trademark on there. Um, this was nice. This came with a, a little insert. With the, uh, with the lyrics on it. So if you get a, if you can find an old pressing, an original pressing, I, I don't know if this, uh, how long they kept pressing this, a little tiny piece of paper, but it's got the lyrics and some photographs. And Mercury uses the, uh, the original uh, Charisma label. So actually not the original, not the original label because uh, the original one was a scroll label, a pink scroll label. But anyway, the classic uh, charisma label. Let's put it that way. So we'll put this back. And move on to. Uh, Yeah, this was a U.S. pressing. This is a... Uh, this is a, a British pressing of the same album, but uh, it's not an original pressing. It's a repress. So. Just half and half. And then this is 
actually, I believe this is a German pressing of, uh, of Cured. This album, a lot of people think that this is Steve's low point, man. I, I thought this was a great record. I love this album. It was released in 81 or 82. And I don't know, I just thought this was a really good record. This is a, uh, like I said, it was a German or a Dutch pressing. I believe. All rights reserved, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say. This might, actually, this might be um, Holland pressing, but anyway, uh, in Europe, uh, they use, they continue to use the uh, the Mad Hatter uh, label, so that's kind of nice. And uh, this has uh, air conditioned night, the air conditioned nightmare on it, which was uh, that's a, kind of a classic live uh, song that he played live a lot. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think this is a really good album. It's uh, a little bit more popish. He, um, I think it was him and Nick Magnus who uh, who did all the sounds on it. I don't think that they had any drummers on it. And I think that is where, I think that's the weak point of the uh, record is that there's no actual drummer on it. They just programmed it. And it came with uh, this insert with the lyrics and his lovely ex. Even his uh, and uh, Kim Porter, the artist who did uh, most of his album covers for the first half of his career. Oh, I hate my my videos suck because I always put this shit away, and it takes forever and a freaking goddamn day to get it all back in the cover, and it is just the biggest pain in my ass. So my apologies. But that's why my albums are in such good shape because I take care of them. All right. The sixth album and the last one in uh, the Charisma years is uh, highly, str <laughs> highly Strong. This happens to be a, a uh, happens to be a domestic pressing in uh, the United States, and it's a very well not very different, but it's got some it's a, it's a different um, it's got different music on it than the UK pressing. This has um, this is another album that you know a lot of people I don't know they like it they hate it. It's not it's not a classic like uh, Acolyte or the first four actually. But this has, um, Cell 151 was uh, released as a single. I don't know if it was a hit, but it was released as a single in England. And uh, in England, uh, they released it on a 12-inch single. You'll see a copy of that in a minute. But uh, there is a longer version of the song on the 12-inch than on the uh, UK album. The domestic pressing here in the United States opted to put the uh, long version on the album. And uh, Walking Through Walls, which starts off side two of the uh, this U.S. pressing, is a different version than what's on the U.K. pressing. So there's a couple of differences. And uh, I think it's actually Walking Through Walls. I think it's an inferior version on here. Not my favorite song, I'll be honest. Um, Here's the lyric in her sleeve, if you want to see it. All right. So that's the domestic pressing of uh, Highly Strong. And here's the UK pressing. see the colors of, of the uh, album cover are very different. Oh, 
I actually have a tour book in, uh, tucked away in the album. I didn't see Steve live. Uh, I can't remember where I got this from. I must have probably got it off of eBay or something. Uh, but um, here it is outside that plastic sleeve so you can see it without the glare. And another Kim Poor album cover, of course. Man, I, it's a shame that uh, they had a falling out because this is just, she's an amazing artist. the record hack one is the um, catalog number hack one and yeah, you can see what a nice day it is here all right This, say it, this actually has some pretty good songs on it. But it was uh, the last one that he did with, uh, with Charisma. Here's uh, the inner lyric sheet. It's got a blue tint to it. Not like that. Uh, the, the U.S. pressing is just a white piece of paper. So... Oh yeah, let me put this back. So this is well, if you like, you want to take a look at this. This is the tour program for that year, for that tour. Don't fuck with me. Plenty of text in here. Great photographs. Steve just looking dapper. Some photographs from his shows. He's got some discography and equipment information in here. This is actually a real nice. Look at this. Here you go. Here's everybody on the tour. Nice shot and some write-ups for everyone. And the equipment. Down to the colored tom-toms. Here's a picture of Kim Four. Boy. Man, he's a real looker, man. No more. They are not they are together no more, these two. the whole book okay. all right that's number six and then uh, they put this single out so 151 and it, this came with a bonus uh, single to uh, entice UK buyers to pick it up and uh, okay so here you go sell 151 is uh, the A side it's the long version and then uh, side B has air conditioned uh, an air conditioned air conditioned nightmare recorded live and then time lapse at Milton Keynes time lapse at Milton Keynes I wonder if that's just a, him sitting backstage and but anyway um uh, Time Lapse at Milton Keynes is a nice non-album uh, acoustic uh, track. And then the bonus is some kind of like a white label pressing of uh, Clocks, which is the single that I showed you from uh, that earlier single. Anyway, um, so there you go. That's the last... The last single that, uh, or the last record, that I guess, that he pressed with uh, Charisma. 
the next album that he put out, I believe, is um, this one right here. Now, this is a rare, I think it's a pretty rare pressing because the um, Till We Have Faces uh, came out with a, on CD with a different cover. But uh, this is on Lamborghini Records, this record. All right. When, uh, I guess, I don't know if Charisma dropped him. I don't know how, what happened. But anyway, he was no longer on Charisma. He's on Lamborghini. Here's the back of the cover with all the lyrics. And here is... Just the label, side one. Lamborghini record. So this is a UK pressing. This was, this, I don't think this was, a, this was ever even released in the United States, except uh, maybe later on CD. I don't know if there's any domestic pressing of this, but anyway, this is the UK pressing. And it has some pretty good material on it. It's, uh, I like this album. Duel, Matilda Smith. Let Me Count the Ways is a classic blues track on here that is fantastic. Really brilliant blues uh, song that he uh, recorded. And A Doll That's Made in Japan. And Side One and then Side Two. Myopia, What's My Name, The Rio Connection, Taking the Easy Way Out and When You Wish Upon a Star. Um, I like this record, it's not bad at all. And you get all the lyrics on the back. All right, so. Um, this was released. The date on here is 1984. Yeah, so this was the, the very next record after. Uh, after Highly Strung. Then <clears throat> from that record, he released this single. Uh, a doll that's made in Japan and uh, this is an interesting 12 inch record because the uh, the song a doll that's made in Japan the a-side is a longer version than what's on the LP it's he stretched it out a while he let it run a while it's about maybe six minutes long and um, the b-side is a non-album cut called Just the Bones. There you go. All right, Just the Bones. I don't believe that's been released uh, digitally at all. And I don't think it's available anywhere else but on this, on this single, Just the Bones. It's an odd track. Kind of a creepy uh, sound and kind of a tune where he kind of whispers over a music track. Um, and I maybe that's, I don't know if he just doesn't like it and he disowned it. I don't know what's the deal there, but uh, when they put out the box sets, two recent box sets, uh, he neglected to include it on, a, uh, on the box set. So, uh, I don't know if Steve's just forgot about it or just doesn't want to know about it anymore. But it's, you know, part of the musical history of his, you know, it's part of his catalog. So, I wish that they, he would put it out, but he hasn't. Uh, here's Bay of Kings. Another piece of art from uh, Kim Poor that I don't believe uh, was used on the CD editions. And again, this is Lamborghini Records. Here's the back. Okay. And this is, a, again, a UK pressing. I don't believe this was released in America on LP. The label looks the same as the other two records you just saw. So, all right. I included this in uh, the collection because, you know, Steve's on it. This is GTR. I think that this is probably the lower point of uh, 
Steve's career, in my opinion, uh, musically, I, this, I don't even have this album. I didn't bother to get it. I did like uh, Hack It to Bits, which is uh, a similar title. He used a, a similar title, Hack It to Pieces, on one of his other records. So anyway, that's, I picked up that single and uh, this is a uh, picture disc of uh, the same single. When the Heart Rules the Mind is the, that other single. Sorry, I didn't even think of saying that. But uh, so here's a big guitar pick for uh, you large people. Here is something that Steve uh, produced and plays on. Uh, Nightwing. Night of Mystery, and uh, it includes uh, Max Bacon, who was uh, also in GTR. I never played this. <laughs> I don't even remember what it sounds like. I picked it up because Steve produced it, and it came out, actually, this came out in 82? Uh, it's, uh, it's got copyright and publishing uh, dates 82, 83, and 84, so I don't know. But... Uh, it's uh, it's a hack at collectible because he plays on it and he pro helped produce it. So I believe. All right, moving on to 1987. 1987. Steve put out Momentum, another uh, mostly acoustic album. This was on the Start label. pressing there's the label of course the, my records are in mint, mint shape you don't loan these out for parties and stuff that's how you keep them in such beautiful shape and uh, if you like Steve's acoustic material this is one that you're gonna want to get If I remember correctly, this was a slightly noisy pressing, though. A little more poppier than uh, most. And I've got this brand new, so. All right, momentum. And that's, uh, that was 87. I don't think Steve pressed a whole lot more uh, records on vinyl after that point um it mostly started coming out on um, strictly on cd so i don't have any more uh on lp until wolf flight and this i actually picked up second hand off of discogs and um wolf flight this is when he's this is he was working with inside out for a couple of years and then this uh this came out. I have a lot of other stuff on CD, but uh, I picked this up because, like Beetle Brad, I'm a big fan of color vinyl. And this I got for a decent price. And it was in beautiful mint mint shape, white vinyl. And, um, What's, what's interesting about uh, the vinyl pressing of Wolf Flight is that it is a, uh, it's got a, a few other songs on it that aren't on the CD on side, uh, side four, I guess you could say, the second record, side two. And it's got a song on it called, I believe it's Caress, is the, uh, is a track that's unique to this pressing. It's, I don't think it was ever pressed on, um, on CD. So, um, if you like one of those completists, you want every track, this is one of those things that you're gonna wanna get on the LP. Doesn't have to be white vinyl, but you have gotta pick up a, a copy on vinyl 
a two record set to get that one track and it's a good track it's like anything else that steve puts out it's all right man and then uh Steve put out at the, uh, he actually put out another album. Uh, what, what is it? What is it? I can't remember. Wolf Flight. And then he put out uh, The Night Siren. And then he put this out at the edge of night, at the edge of, at the edge of night, at the edge of light. All right. And uh, this album is. It's another uh, one where they uh, released actually a couple of different uh, deluxe editions on colored records, colored vinyl. Uh, this one's white. And um, I believe that this is just a three-sided album. The fourth side's got a, 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 an etching. Okay, let's pull that out. came with a nice insert All right, some information and uh, yeah. all right uh, let's see what we got here yeah side four well, there is no side floor, but let's see if I can get the light to. Yeah, you can see some kind of etchings on there. I had, I, yeah, all right, there it is. There he is, there's a guy. And there is very, it's very difficult to see what the hell is on here. I'll be honest, I don't spend a lot of time looking at these etchings and I, I always find it to be kind of a ripoff. I'd rather have, if you got that whole side sitting there, put something over there, put an interview on it, put a, maybe a, an a alternate version of a track, a different mixing, maybe an extended mix or an extended version of something. But uh, that etching just uh, seems like kind of a cop out to me. But I bought it anyway, which is exactly what the artist is gonna want, so. And I'm happy I have it. I love it, Steve. I actually like this record. It's not my, his later material is not my favorite. The first four are, it's hard to beat the quality of those, uh, of those albums. The, the music is the best. But because I'm such a ridiculous fan, I picked up a second copy. That he signed, you can see he signed it here. I didn't do this, All right? I don't have a certificate of authenticity to prove it, but take my word for it. And then uh, this is actually a different, like a black, it's a clear black splatter vinyl. And it was funny because I bought that white one and then I heard about this and I went, oh shit, I want that. So I splurged and this is what I got. And I like the custom label, by the way. There you go. Okay, so. See if we can see that etching on this one. Oh, turn and face whatever you most fear is actually in that etching as well, next to the guy. There, you can see that now. Oh, yeah. Herbie Hancock, uh, Gary Boyle's getting into Herbie now. All right, so uh, that's the bulk of my uh, 
my LP uh, collection, uh, Steve Hackett. One more, this one, just came out maybe six months ago or so. Steve Hackett Live from uh, 1990 in Nottingham. All right, the inner sleeve. And uh, all the rage is color vinyl, so he put it out in brown. Now, you might think, why is it brown? Does it sound like shit? No, this is a fucking great concert, man. It's probably just a, a portion of the show or maybe just a selected cuts from it, but I'm showing, uh, I'm seeing eight tracks here. But when I, I put this on and listen to this, this was, I was very impressed with the sound quality on this thing. <clears throat> Some really good tracks on here band was uh, firing on all cylinders if you want to use a cliche and it's good it was good so this was a I was a happy customer with this one as well and yeah I'm keep these uh, all these stickers if I get if I can get this off of the shrink wrap I put it on these little plastic sleeves that I use for these records all right <clears throat> We're almost done. All my singles. And the first one I have is a domestic copy of... Uh, of Narnia, off the second album. Mint shape, I picked this up somewhere uh, secondhand. And uh, stereo mono. White label pressing. All right. And I have uh, Kim and How Can I? How can I see uh, a side? That's got uh, Richie Haven singing. No picture sleeve. It's a UK pressing. You gotta get those one of those European pressings for a picture sleeve. Here's the uh, British pressing of Narnia. Okay, this is actually. Um, with John Perry singing the lead. And uh, is a, the original album doesn't have this version on it. It's a different, uh, it's a different version with John Perry singing. All right, and um, Please Don't Touch is on the B-side. That's an LP version of the song. All right, and uh, next is Every Day, British single, Every Day, Lost Time in Cordoba's on the B-side. Okay. And uh, here it is again. Okay, this is a, um, I believe it's maybe a German pressing. German or uh, Holland. Somebody had to scribble their goddamn name on there, but uh, I let it slide because you got that beautiful charisma label. He didn't write it on the B side, so here, look at that. That's more like it. Lost Time in Cordoba. It's a great song. Off the third third album all right and uh so there's the european pressing of that and we'll take about 10 minutes to put this back in here so you just hold on tight while i waste your time My videos are the, <laughs> my 
my videos are the worst. There's more wasted time, and I ain't gonna freaking sit and edit it. All right, so anyway, there you go. Here's the B side. Curves my way. With did some uh, tour dates, of course. They always do that in the UK. I mean, in uh, Europe. Those European single B sides sleeves. All right, here's the show from the fourth album. The Toast. B side. Oh, it's just one of those Charisma plastic uh, labels. Here's Sentimental Institution. Again, from that's uh, that's from the fourth album, and side two, the toast is on this one. Okay. Now you would think that the label would have it would have. You'd think the record label itself would have this nice blue label. So I was really excited about getting this, but when I got it. It has the same old Charisma label as uh, they all do. I, th I thought that uh, it would be cool if they could dress it up with the paper blue label like that. No such luck. I still love Charisma Records, though. All right. And then uh, another... Uh, single with a outer picture sleeve is Hope I Don't Wake and Tales of the Riverbank which was a uh, non-LP track off of uh, that fifth album that he released okay same thing and uh, in England he released uh Hope I Don't Wake, and then, yeah, Tales of the Riverbank, right. Actually, did have a picture sleeve. My my mistake. I know you put out another uh, single, uh, Picture Postcard, and then that had a B-side that was on another album, one of his acoustic records. But anyway, I don't have a copy of that. I do have this, though. This is just the same as uh, the other one I just showed you. And then um, I do have Cell 151 on a seven inch. This was when I was just going nuts and I would get both versions. I would get the 12 inch and the seven inch. And there you have it. Oh, B-side is Time Lapse at Milton Keene. No live track. And then uh, a doll that's made in Japan. This is parts one and two. There's no song on here called Just the Bones. What they did was they put the album version on the A side and then they put the instrumental uh, second section on the B side. If you get to 12 inch, you have both of these spliced together basically. And uh, of course that's the way to go. It's just the second side fades in and fades out. So, but anyway, there you have it. That's my uh, Steve Hackett vinyl collection and uh oh yeah and then i have this too so domestic i think i paid a nickel for this these are not a dime a dozen they're a nickel a dozen they're a nickel a crate all right but anyway nice little picture sleeve and too bad that uh, when steve howe and steve hackett got together the music just really just wasn't that great all right, guys. See you later. Have a nice day.